Polar coordinates are interesting. In graphing polar curves, you may have actually done that before. Um, in this class, we actually will use polar coordinates quite a bit. We, we will use them for two purposes in general. The first purpose is to describe a complicated region. I'll give you kind of a simple example. Um, suppose you want to give equations that describe the disk of radius 4. And we say disk of radius 4, we mean the interior of the circle of radius 4. So the circle of radius 4 would be this now. We need to specify basically a range of points in the xy plane that do that. Now, if we wanted to specify them in terms of x and y, it's a little bit of a complicated problem. So first thing, this disk lies between x equals negative 4 and x equals 4. So we could give this, um, this requirement first, right? That narrows it down to this band, um, this, this infinite band, um, this infinite vertical band between x equals negative 4 and positive 4. And then, for each point within that band, for each x value, then we have a lower starting y and an upper ending y. Now, where they start and end are on this curve. And the equation of the curve is x squared plus y squared equals r squared, right? x squared plus y squared equals 16. So that says y squared equals 16 minus x squared. And so y equals plus or minus 16 minus x squared. The positive one is obviously the upper bound, and the negative one is the lower bound, right? So if you use the negative one, you have, you're here. If you use the positive one, you're there. So for y is in this range, the description is actually somewhat complicated. The y's are between negative 16 minus x squared, negative square root of 16 minus x squared, and positive square root of 16 minus x squared. But if we describe this in um, polar coordinates, it's very simple. There, basically, to visit every point in this disk once, you just have to turn all the way around. So theta goes from 0 to 2 pi. And the radius, as you turn around, you can walk any distance from 0 out to a distance of 4. Right. So for each direction you face, you, could, you can walk out any distance between 0 and 4, and that will put you at those different points. So our bounds on R are then 0 to 4. OK, so rather complicated equations, right? inequalities, sorry, that describe, um, describe the region in, in xy space, but very simple way to describe them in terms of R and theta. In fact, in R theta space, this region is just a simple rectangle, right? Because the R, here's the R value, here's the theta value. The r can go from 0 to 4, and the theta can go from 0 to 2 pi. So there's 0, there's 2 pi, like that. OK, so that's just this simple rectangular region. We will use this over and over and over again to simplify things. We have this nice description in our theta space of a more complicated region in xy space. And it's just interpreting each point here as directions as to where to go over here, right? The theta is a direction to face, and the r is um, a distance to walk out, and that's how this point gets gets turned into a point here. That's one reason. The first reason why we love polar coordinates they allow us to describe to use simpler regions in in place of more complicated regions.